Hello, hello. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks so much for joining me today. In today's episode, we are going to be crushing these hard geometry problems that I got from different practice tests of the SAT. I want to show you there's nothing to fear. You're going to do great. If you can solve these problems, you're definitely on your road to getting a perfect score on the math section of the SAT. Uh, as you watch this video, I might suggest maybe pausing each problem, trying to solve it for yourself. Uh, I'm just going to go straight through, sol solve everything. I want to try to point out some little different things the SAT people try to trick you with. And so that's it. Let's, let's get started. Let's dive right in. Let's see our first problem. All right. In the figure above, AB equals 6, BC equals 8. What is the length of segment BD? So what are we looking for? BD is this segment, and this is what we're looking for. What are we told? We should always write down what we're told. AB is length 6, and BC is length 8. So the very first thing I'm noticing for this already is 6, 8, is going to be what? Well, 6 and 8 is our, one of our special right triangles. It is our special 3, 4, 5 right triangles scaled up by a factor of 2. So that means the length of AC is length 10. I definitely recommend knowing your special right triangles. Uh, whenever you do the SAT, it just saves a whole bunch of time. And I definitely think the hardest thing about the SAT is the time crunch. So know your three, four, five special right triangle. Know your, what's another good one? Another good one is maybe the five, 12, 13. This is another one that pops up a lot. And these are the two I recommend knowing. Also know 45, 45, 90 triangles, 30, 60, 90 triangles, and so forth and so on. Okay, let, let's get back to the problem. So the question is, what is the length of segment BD. So we want to know this value, this x. So what can we do to find this x? Well, something I also know about the SAT is each of these problems should be able to be solved in two minutes max. I mean, even less than that. So we're setting up a complex systems of equations with AD equaling 10 minus some, some y. And it's going to be that's going to be pretty challenging it's going to take up a lot of time so we shouldn't do that uh, I'm thinking for this problem well what else do we know about triangles uh, well we know that the area of a triangle is just base times height divided by 2 and why is this going to be useful well we can let 6 be our base and so our area is going to be 6 times height 8 divided by 2 or we could let 10 be our base. Uh, if 10 is our base, then 10 times our mystery x divided by 2 is also going to be our area. And so now we have an equation where we can solve for x. Uh, whenever we solve for x, what do we get? Well, we get 48 divided by 2 is 24. Uh, so we get 24 equals 5x. Oops, I accidentally wrote 25. 24 equals 5x divided by 5 divide by 5, and so our x value is 24 fifths. This answer is D. All right, excellent. Let's, let's go on to the next problem. Let's check it out. What is it? The curve y equals x squared over 2 and the line y equals x over 2 intersect at the origin and at the point AB, as shown in the figure above. What is the value of B? All right, so key here, it's asking for B. We want to know, so what, what is B? What, B is the Y coordinate for this point. So we need to know the Y value. So how can we find this intersection point? What do we do? Well, we simply just set our equations equal to one another. So when does X squared over two equal X squared, or just X over two? Well, this is the same thing as when does x squared equal x? And I hope you can start seeing the answer right now. We're, we're already told that the origin is a solution. 
and of course 0 squared equals 0 and what else would be a solution? Well another solution could be well 1 squared of course equals 1 and so here we see that uh, our x value can be 1 and so you might be circling D and if you're circling D right now this is the mistake please do not circle D this is rushing do, please do not rush remember they're asking you for the value of B and B is the Y value of this point 1 is the X value so we need to now plug in 1 into our equation and if we do that we get y equals 1 over 2 so y is 1 half so our correct answer is choice C not D but choice C alright excellent excellent let's see our next problem halfway done for this video okay so what does this problem say in the figure above a square is inscribed in a circle if the area of the square is 36, what is the perimeter of the shaded region? So again, they're, they're kind of tricking you a little bit. Usually whenever you have a shaded region, they're going to ask for area. But this question is asking for perimeter. So we need to know the perimeter of just the shaded region. So how can we find this? Well, in, in the problem, we're told that the area of this square is 36. So that means the links, the side links, must be 6, as 6 times 6 is 36. So that means this length here, the bottom part of our shaded region, is 6. So we have 6 as part of our perimeter. And then what else? Well, we're going to have to do 6 plus what? 6 plus this part of the outside edge of our circle or this part of our circle circumference. And what part of our circle circumference is, is this? Well, we have an inscribed square, and so this is one out of four parts of our circumference. So our perimeter for the shaded region is going to be six, this bottom length, plus one quarter of our circumference of our circle. And circumference is found by pi times your diameter. Again, this formula should be known. It should also be on your SAT formula sheet. And so the only mystery here is what is the diameter? Well, the diameter of our circle is going to be what? It can also be found as the diagonal of our square. You can see here that the diagonal of our square and the diameter of our circle are one and the same. So let's figure out this value. Well, what we just made is we made a, a nice right triangle with side lengths 6. And this is our mystery. Our diameter is our mystery. And what is this? Well, this is a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. And this is, again, something that should be on your SAT formula sheet, but everything on that formula sheet you should have in your mind, okay? And if this is a 45, 45, 90 right triangle, then that means our question mark is 6 square root of 2. So our diameter, our diameter is 6 square root 2. So let's rewrite our formula down here with everything we have. So we have 6 plus 1 quarter of pi and 6 square root 2. And it, whenever we simplify this value, what do we get? We get 6 plus 3 pi square root 2 over 2. And so this value is A. So our answer here is A. All right, excellent. And I'm looking at some of these answer choices. You know, the answer choices are always just common mistakes people make. Uh, if you forget to divide by 2, that's C. Uh, I'm sure the area is one of these values. But let's, let's carry on. Let's go to the last problem of today's video. All right, let's see it. If four distinct lines lie in a plane and exactly two of them are parallel, 
what is the least possible number of points of intersection of these lines? Okay, so let's, uh, let's draw some lines. So it says we have a pair of parallel lines. So here are our parallel lines. And now we want two other lines. Okay, I'll just kind of draw them randomly and see what happens. Okay, so how many points of intersection do we have here? We have uh, one, two, three, four, five. So we have five points of intersection. So our, our answer choice cannot be E, it's going to be at least five. Uh, could we have less than five? Uh, well, let's draw some more lines and see, okay. Here, this time our green lines will be parallel, and let's just pick some different colors. So there we have a line, and where can this fourth line go? Well, I'm going to make this fourth line such that one of its intersections is an intersection we already had so that it doesn't add one. And how many intersections do we have now? Well, we have one, two, three points of intersection. Okay, so now our answer is at three. The only other answer choice is two. Could we possibly have two points of intersection? Well, let's think about this. Could we? This is, uh, if we want to get a perfect score, we need to be able to definitively say that two is not the correct answer. So let's, let's again draw a couple lines. Let's see. So we have two parallel lines and then two other lines. So here's a line. So here we have two points of intersection already. So where, where would our fourth line go? Well, well, our fourth line would have to be the exact same as our third line in order to only have two points of intersection. However, in our question, we're told that we have four distinct lines. So this is not a possible solution for this problem. Uh, and so the correct answer must be B, three lines. All right, everybody, there was there are some hard geometry problems for the SAT. If you got all these right, then you are definitely on the right path of getting a perfect score. I'm going to be solving some more hard geometry problems in some future videos. This was just part one. I'll probably have a part two and a part three. Uh, th those questions are going to be even harder than these. Again, I'm getting these problems from real SAT tests, so these are the types of questions you are going to see. These are the tricks of the trade so to speak. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. It really does help. And leave any comments down below what you would like to see from me. And until next time, take care, everybody.